Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Najwa. I'm so happy you're here. If you're new here, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell, that way you'll know whenever I post a video. So I want to talk to you. Um, this woman named Maureen Ryan released a book um, and her book is called Burn It Down, Power, Complicity, and a Call for Change in Hollywood. Now this is a woke white woman, as I've said many times on this channel. In order for black and brown people, and particularly in the U.S. and the Western world, to really, for us to really move past the stains of institutional racism, of slavery, and those traces of those things that rest today, you know, where we don't get equal representation in entertainment, where we don't get equal representation across uh, administration, across government, and when we do, uh, all of a sudden neo-Nazis and KKK and everything starts popping up again. We really won't be able to resolve any of that until we get really, really honest with ourselves. And what that's going to take is, you know, brown people, people of color, blacks, marginalized groups, not allowing themselves to be silenced, fighting that good fight, but also a few woke white people to help us along the way. I've said that many times. We've taken that woke word back. So... I, I, Maureen is a white woman and she is beasting it. She is on her anti-racist game. She is apparently a writer who's written for many, many different series, television shows, films in Hollywood. And she basically spills about the industry's institutional racism. Now, you guys know that I love the show Lost. ABC's Lost is one of my all-time favorite shows. I watch it at least once a year. I feel like it's not just a show. It's something so much more than that. I, it just has so many nuggets of value. And one of the most impeccable things about it is this all-star multicultural cast. You know, we have representation of black Americans, of Africans, of Koreans, of British people, of uh, Indian people, even though, you know, um, the guy who plays Saeed, uh, Naveen Andrews, is of Indian descent. He's playing an, 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 an Iraqi man. And, you know, of course, I would love, I think today they would actually just, um, they would actually just cast an Iraqi man, you know. But it's also, a, I think that loss is also an indicator of its time, you know. It really shows where we've come from and it shows where we were at back in 2004 when it came out. And also where we're going. Now that 20 years on, we can look back on it. You know, at the time, it was astounding. It was astounding to see so many different cultural representations of people and say, oh my goodness, this is, this is beautifully, beautifully written. And it's not too, too, too ultra full of stereotypes, even though it was at times, you know. But now I feel like we're even further and, and we're going to keep going further. And that's what's so beautiful about it. But in this book, Marie Ryan basically spills that no, 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 no. Institutional racism was weaved fully into this thing. One thing that I recognized when I saw it as a 13-year-old girl and it becoming my favorite show and then, you know, watching it again in my adulthood. I think I like, you know, I watched it when it was on TV with my parents and then I didn't see it, you know, I didn't really go back to it until I was maybe like 19 or 20. And then I came back to it when I was 19 or 20 and I, it kind of gave me a, a, it was like a cult classic for me. I was like, oh my God, I vi vowed to myself, I'm going to watch this every year, at least once. And I do. My husband knows it. I get my popcorn, you know, I sit in front of the TV, I watch Lost, and I sort of, each time I'm able to dissect things about the characters that I didn't do before. And I feel like in those different phases, my 13-year-old self watching Lost, my 19-year-old self watching Lost, and me today, you know, in my 30s, I watch it and I, 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 can, I can see the handprint and the blueprint of the different uh, cultural ethnicities who contributed to the show. You know, I can see the black perspective, I can see the white perspective, I can see the Korean or the Asian perspective, I can see uh, the, 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 you know, Sawyer, who's like kind of like the redneck thing, even though I, everybody loves Sawyer. He's the anti-hero that we all love to hate. Um, you see all of these different subcultural and cultural perspectives in the show, and it just is absolutely beautiful. 
article to look at. We're going to take a look at this article together um, where it actually does go ahead and talk about uh, Maureen's book. I, I want to read Maureen's book, but I don't want to make too many promises right now because I'm, I'm extremely, extremely busy. And I think after summer vacation, this is probably when I'm going to get to this book. But I really, really want to read it because it sounds super awesome. So this is an article from Vanity Fair. And it is from Maureen Ryan. Oh, it's from the lady who wrote the book. And it's uh, entitled Lost Illusions, the untold story of the hit show's poisonous culture. And it says the show was a groundbreaking smash, but behind the scenes, it devolved, it devolved into such toxicity that even co-showrunner co Damon Lindelof now says of his leadership, I failed. A powerful excerpt from the new book, Burn It Down. So it begins and says, I got chills. A woman called Teresa was telling me about the early days of the Lost Writers Room before the ABC drama premiered in September 2004. She knew in her bones it was special long before the huge ratings confirmed it. So it goes in to tell a little bit about how that dramatic entrance with the plane and the propellers going and everything and how everybody was just like, oh my God, this thing is so big, it's going to be so good, which we all know it was. Um, and then it goes in to tell you that that pilot cost $13 million. Mm -hmm, that's expensive. Um, but I'm going to skip down and I'm going to go straight into the race element where it starts to talk about that. Okay, so it goes in to talk about how there wasn't equal pay for the actors. And, you know, not only was there not equal pay, oftentimes there were black writers writing uh, storylines and, and, and monologues, dialogues for the black characters. There were Asian writers writing dialogues for the Asian characters. So that's why um, Lost really did feel authentic. You know, even with the fudges of, you know, casting an Indian guy as an Iraqi guy and having a guy who didn't speak Korean before cast as a Korean, you know, that stuff like that where... And, and, you know, something that's really funny is on Reddit, when I have looked into the accents for the British people, you know, I just wanted to know, like, the British people in the show, were, were the accents any good? And basically, everybody was like, uh, aside from Charlie, who actually is British, and Naomi, everybody else was not British, and it was very clear to tell for British people, and they said everybody put on this terrible, almost hackney, uh, medieval, uh, type, type accent. Um, but even with that being said, even those users on Reddit was like, it still was such an epic show. So it, it was able to move past its sort of rudimentary super, superficial barriers or, or lens that it had on race and culture. But it had good intentions and so it got there. But the same thing that we see in institutional racism, you know, is like the white characters were the leads. They always were the leads. They always were the, the heroes. And even uh, Maureen talks about in, in, in the background of behind the scenes, there, there actually was talk of that verbally, that the white characters are the heroes. The black characters, oh, we'll just throw them on a, another beach somewhere and do this, do that. And um, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to read the article because it's quite a long read. I'm just going to give you a synopsis. You guys, I'm going to put it, the link in there and you can just go and look it up. But essentially what it says is that... Um, the black actors and the black writers would essentially go to management and say, hey, I feel like this, this particular scene is um, not very realistic and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't embrace the, the perspective of this culture very well. Or they go and they say, hey, like, why, why are we just making it seem like Michael and his son disappearing, you know, another black boy disappearing? Why are we making that seem like that's a good thing? We're always doing this in our culture of making it seem like black lives don't matter. So why are we re re repeating this in the show? Um, and that same thing was saying, oh, like, they don't really care about the black characters. You see that with Mr. Echo. You know, Mr. Echo was a character that I really, really wish could have stayed longer, you know. And I wish that they would have given him more nuance. You know, he seemed very, uh, his character seemed very rudimentary in terms of the other people. But at the same time, there was that, that silent um, reflection that he gave off rang so 
spiritual to me, you know? So that's the irony here is that, you know, the management was perpetuating institutional racism, even in a show that was so multicultural. But now when you look into lost cult culture online, other losties like me who love it, the the characters of color have they, that's 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 some of the best storylines. So, you know, that's that's the irony there. But um yeah they would write the people of color, the characters of colors, scenes to be less dramatic. And if it was a heroic moment, it just de de didn't have as much buzz. There wasn't as much effort or writing or momentum put behind their heroic moments. Um, they definitely tried to separate the people of color's heroic moments with the, the, the white people's uh, heroic moments. There was talk, like blatant talk that Locke, Jack, Kate, and Sawyer were the heroes. You know, they were the heroes. And so, you know, Saeed has his moments, but at the end, Saeed turns dark. Um, every, everybody kind of has heroic moments in the show, but if we could have got at least one person of color who was also just a lead, a lead hero, just like Jake, Kate, Sawyer, I mean, that would have been wonderful. But you know what? Baby steps. We'll get there. We'll get there. At least it was some progress, but we have to continue. And, you know, things right here in 2023 that we probably think are so just diverse and amazing. And, you know, we, we probably will come back 20 years later and we will have improved upon that. So um, we always should just be moving forward. But as a person of color, it doesn't really surprise me that even in a liberal state like California, Hollywood can have institutional racism weaved all up in it. It doesn't surprise me. But the irony is, you know, even after all that, the scenes with the, the people of color are some of the most iconic scenes, you know. So you can't hold a good man or a woman down. That's all that it is. That's all that it is. Maybe we don't get the, the fair representation or pay that we do, but we keep we keep on advocating and we keep on making our voices be heard and uh eventually something breaks through, you know? Like America is having extreme financial problems right now, but as I've said in other videos, America is also losing $10 billion a year by not representing the populations that America has within Hollywood. $10 billion a year. So, um, yeah. America, it learned a hard, hard lesson. Hard, 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 hard lesson. But it'll get there. It takes time. It takes time. But um, even with that being said, even with those restrictions, you know, and, and the article is beautiful because it talks about the black writers saying, you know, being beat down and, you know, discriminated against writing on the show, trying so hard to let the perspectives of people of color shine through while everybody is telling you oh no we're not going to do that you know or Ugh, let's just put we'll put the people of color in there but throw them on another beach or whatever you know saying that the writers would go home to their kids and have to sit in the car and cry for an hour before they go in front of their kids because they feel so beat down with this struggle you know I thank them. I thank them because their genius still showed through. And I'm not saying that, you know, the, the characters of Kate, Jack, Sawyer, um, Locke didn't shine through because I love all of those characters. I love all of those actors. But let's be better, guys. Let's be better. But anyway, I would love to know what you guys think. If you haven't seen Lost, I really recommend you watch it. It's one of the best shows ever. A lot of biblical parallels. So if you're also a person of faith and, you know, you're looking for something to entertain you outside of the Bible, but also that has sort of biblical parallels and biblical teachings. I think you'd love it. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll, I'll look for what you guys, what your thoughts are in the comments. And if you're new here, please do me a favor. Hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell so you know whenever I post a video. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye, bye.